the river of love Where the current runs deep and Baptized in the one Where there's no separation And the light is all we see Honoring all our differences And love will set us free Whoa, whoa, whoa Mother, Father, God There's a healing going on Mother, Father, God There's a healing going on Yeah, Mother, Father, God There's a healing going on I said, oh, you rock my soul I said, oh, you rock my song. I see the blessings of the past. It's time to requalify. Let's not forget, but learn to forgive. God knows we gotta try. It's my responsibility to heal the wounds in me. Compassion, faith, and hope, and love, and truth will set us free. Oh, oh, oh. said, oh, you rock my soul. I said, oh, you rock my soul. One more time, I said, Father, Father, God, there's a healing going on. I said, oh, you rock my soul. I said, oh, you rock my soul. My brother, 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 my sister, my brother, my friend, my brother, my sister, my mother, my friend, my brother, my sister, my mother, my friend, my brother, my sister, my Oh, Lord, yeah. There's a healing going on. Come on, y'all. There's a healing going on. There's a healing going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a healing going on. Sing some healing for me, Mr. Rob. Good morning. So, welcome to Unity of Lehigh Valley's Palm Sunday service. I'm Reverend Joy. I've 
noticed on my videos that I don't ever introduce myself. I just assume that everybody knows who I am and um, we're just all together. So, good morning and I, I see that we are gathering. So, let's just go ahead and open with our opening prayer. So, we just take a breath. Allow ourselves to become centered in this now moment. This gathering of unity of Lehigh Valley. We come together because we have heard the call. Spirit inviting us into community. Spirit invites us to come with open hearts and open minds, open to the flow of divine energy, of healing love, healing peace, healing joy. We are grateful, grateful for one another, grateful for the unity of our gathering and for this opportunity to be together. We are here to shine our light into the world. And so it is. Amen. So, good morning and thank you, Deborah. I'm you know, pearls just kind of dress up an outfit, and uh, it is Palm Sunday, so I thought I would be a little less casual, even though um, I'm still home. And I apologize if the camera is doing some wonky things with uh, lighting. It's a gray day, and um, and unfortunately on gray days in our sanctuary, the lighting isn't much better, so... Uh, we'll just muddle through. We're going to begin with our opening affirmations. Our first affirmation is our unity statement. There's only one power and one presence. One activity in my life and in the universe. God, the good omnipotence. Our vision. The vision unity of Lehigh Valley holds for the world. We co-create an awakened world of peace, harmony, and abundance. And we are a part of that co-creation. We're not all of it because we use spirit. Spirit within us to co-create. And our mission. What is ours to do in the world? United in love, we provide a positive environment for all people to discover and express their spiritual nature. And so, this morning, our positive environment is physical distance and spiritual connection. And so, we come together from our homes, through the miracle of technology, we remember that we are never separate. We are always one. Our daily word for today is... Hosanna, an appropriate daily word for Palm Sunday. With joy, love, and faith, I celebrate my growing Christ awareness. Shouts of Hosanna arise as the people cover the dusty road with palm branches, greeting Jesus with great enthusiasm as he rides a donkey into Jerusalem, according to the gospel stories. Spiritually understood, the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem symbolizes the dawning of Christ awareness in the heart of humankind. The crowd's shouts of Hosanna represent prayers that this dawning Christ awareness be protected and nurtured. I reflect on this powerful story, seeing in myself both the dawning Christ awareness, and the shouting crowd of thoughts responding 
to the Christ light. On this Palm Sunday, my heart sings Hosanna. I celebrate the growing Christ awareness in the Jerusalem of my soul. Our scripture is from Mark chapter 11, verse 10. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So, here we are. Palm Sunday, and it's our fourth online Sunday. Can you believe that? This is the fourth time we've been doing church online. So, I suspect it doesn't exactly feel like Palm Sunday. There's no brunch being set up downstairs, although I hope everyone will be planning brunch. I saw Joe Seeger and Rob were enjoying keto pancakes for their uh, Palm Sunday brunch. I'll be making my Palm Sunday brunch after I get done, so uh, we'll see how that turns out. Some of the hymns that we're used to singing are not going to happen. Uh, the intro music was... Um, Jamie Lula, and it's from the Empower Music website, um, their list of music that we have permission to play with our uh, live streaming. Is there a palm branch? Well, I don't have a palm branch at my house, but if you have some, wave your palm branches. Otherwise, that's not going to happen this Palm Sunday. Still, what is it that we want to celebrate? On Palm Sunday. Is there a reason not to celebrate just because some of the familiar trappings might be missing? In Keep It True Lent, Charles Fillmore says this about Palm Sunday. The hosannas of the rejoicing multitude and the spreading of their garments and branches of trees for Jesus represent joyful obedience and homage that all the thoughts in one's conscience give when an error thought of mind is overcome. Joyful obedience and homage that all thoughts in one's consciousness give when an error thought of mind is overcome. Blessed is one that cometh in the name of the Lord. As I reflected on the ministry of Jesus, I found three elements that were a part of lifting one's consciousness to overcome error states of mind. Healing, which we started with, education, and miracles. I'm usually not that big on acronyms, but I couldn't help but notice that healing, education, and miracles spelled him. H-E-M, as in the woman was healed by touching the hem of his garment. What did this hem look like as it unfolded for Jesus? And what does it look like in the ministry of Unity of Lehigh Valley? That's what I kind of want to do today a little bit is to talk about the ministry of Jesus and how that shows up in our ministry, the ministry of Unity of Lehigh Valley. We started with there's a healing going on because, frankly, that seems to be the most frequent request of Silent Unity's prayer and in the midst of a pandemic, an idea that is on everyone's mind. In the revealing word, Fillmore says this about healing. When the mind is free from error thoughts, Harmony in the body ensues. Fillmore also says health is from within and does not have to be manufactured in the without. It is the very essence of being, universal and enduring. The very idea that there is wholeness within, that divine spark within us is pretty radical. Healing is a consciousness of wholeness. And from that awareness, we bring a return to wholeness in our body. Or 
we bring a return to wholeness in our emotions. Or we bring a return to wholeness in our relationships, our finances, and our peace of mind. There's really not just one way that wholeness shows up. There's not one way that healing out pictures. And that's important to remember in this pandemic that the error states of thought may be not in an individual state of mind, but in the race consciousness of humanity's mind. And that the healing might not outpicture as wellness in our body, but perhaps it's outpicturing as a peace of mind in that individual's consciousness. Health, wholeness, and well-being are all states of consciousness that make themselves manifest in a unique way for each one of us. Does healing happen at Unity of El Lehigh Valley? We might immediately have an image of an evangelical service with someone laying hands on individuals while others are shouting, praising, and some fall on the ground. While I'm not denying that those evangelical moments are opportunities for healing, it doesn't look like that at ULV. Rather, at ULV, I think it looks like an awakening to the truth that we possess wholeness. And that divine life is a power that we can access. How many of us have had an aha moment through Unity of Lehigh Valley or some community church or, or some other teaching that suddenly awoke us to the idea that there is wholeness within us, that there is a divine spark. And that awakening is the beginning of healing. It is the healing of taking control of our decisions. The healing of believing that we are worthy of wholeness in body, in relationship, in finance, and in our mind. Healing occurs in recognizing that an addiction is running our life and that we can make a different choice day by day. Healing, awakening that we are not alone in our decision making, that we are one with spirit, that there is a greater power available to us. People heal by releasing dis-ease, and by accepting wholeness as the truth of their being. And yes, I believe that happens in our community. And I'm grateful that we are a place where those teachings are made available. Which brings me to education. And another E-word, empowerment. Most of the education that Jesus engaged in was directed towards encouraging people to claim the personal power and to use it for their own lives. He revealed to them, through them, that there was this power that they could tap into. He taught in a number of ways not the least of which was by example. Teaching by example and knowing that he was walking the talk so that others could simply understand more about what he was teaching by looking at the way that he was living his life. He taught by parables or stories that illustrate a spiritual principle. He taught by precepts or directives or simple one-liners. Things like, judge not lest you be judged. Reap what you sow. And that great one-liner, love one another. All of the teachings designed 
to help people understand their own divinity, their kinship with the divine creator and with one another, their magnificent power and the beauty that they possessed and the gifts that they had. And I don't know if you can hear in the background, but Raymond has decided to join the service, so I can't mute him. Jesus shares teachings that allow us to replace the error thoughts of limitation with new beliefs in unlimited possibilities. And he taught the very temporary nature of our existence here on earth and the foolishness of our attachment to how things should be and our attachment to stuff. In this very moment, how attached are we to the belief that things should be different than they are. Things like Raymond shouldn't bark. The world shouldn't be in a pandemic. We shouldn't be separate from one another. And how attached are we to our stuff? To our Easter decorations, to, to our sanctuary, to being together. So, does ULV educate? Well, I think that's something that you have to tell me. Because ULV's education shows up in each one of it. What have you learned through the sermons, the workshops, the classes, and events associated with Unity of Lehigh Valley? I no longer say here at ULV because the sermons and the classes and the workshops are not happening in a building. They're happening through Unity of Lehigh Valley, but not at the building that we call Unity of Lehigh Valley. And what glorious lessons there are from that time apart, that we are everywhere that Unity of Lehigh Valley is no longer on 3rd Street or no longer limited to being on 3rd Street. We connect through cyber connections. Our relationship laboratory has expanded and there are no walls to contain our ministry. We continue to learn and grow together and no... <laughs> No one sits in anyone else's seat because we are all in our own place. It seems some pretty spectacular empowerment is still unfolding. Some pretty interesting education is still going on in this unique void. Once seeds have been planted, education continues to grow and unfold without any new lectures, without any new prompting. We know metaphysical interpretation means going beyond the literal meaning. We know life is full of lessons, so we just go about our days looking for them. How many seeds have been thrown into the soil of your mind from songs and stories and sermons that you've been exposed to through Unity of Lehigh Valley. This is how ULV's ministry continues the tradition of education and empowerment. So that's the H and the E of the hymn. What about miracles? Webster says miracles are events that deviate from the known laws of nature. Fillmore points that out that in reality, miracles are events that take place as a result of the operation of a higher unknown law. Or for me, sometimes events that operate according to a law beyond my understanding. The miracles of Jesus are what distinguish him in the minds of some as being truly divine, raising the dead into life, walking on water, multiplying the loaves and fishes, and turning water into wine. It is interesting to note that the Old Testament has certain prophets 
who perform miracles of healing and abundance, especially Elijah and Elisha. So what do the miracles represent as a part of Jesus' ministry? To me, miracles represent possibilities beyond our current level of belief and sometimes even imagination. Could the pandemic in the United States end in April? Because I do believe in miracles, I would say yes. Do I have any idea about how that would happen? No. Do I think we should ignore science and think a miracle will save us? No. Belief and action are tandem. And belief in miracles does not mean that a miracle will manifest or that it will look exactly the way we think it will. I think the idea of miracles is to stay open to possibilities, to claim the potential that we overlook when we get mired in our humanity, in our duality. So continue to stay open. Do miracles happen at ULV? Well, I've been here 11 years and no one has walked on water. And I do know of one person who's talked about a near-death experience and lived to tell about it. But we do have some interesting loaves and fishes stories. The first happened years ago when I suggested that we have three months of cash reserve for operating expenses. When I made that suggestion at a strategic planning session of the board, the board looked at me a little perplexed. And they said, and what action steps do you have in mind for that goal? We currently aren't even breaking even. So how would we put anything aside for cash reserves? I said, well, for now, let's set the intention and see how it goes. A little over a year later, we were beginning to break even in operating income and expense, and we had an inheritance that funded our cash reserves. That's the operation of the law of mind action, principles of abundance, and still it's beyond the initial expectation of possibilities. Certainly beyond what we thought was possible at the time, although I believe in potential. A few years ago, I had been talking about renovating the sanctuary. I had colors picked out in discussions with the board. And I suspect if I had said out loud that we could rip out all the carpet update the downstairs lighting, and repaint all the sanctuary and have it all paid for, most of you would have said, when pigs fly. Even knowing my fondness for flying pigs, we have a lot of suspicion around miracles. And is the broken pipe and the insurance money a miracle? Like much of life, I suppose, it looks like the perception, and the filter that you bring to it. So it could be an odd coincidence. Or it can be a miracle. Miracles give us examples that reinforce the idea that with God all things are possible. Miracles encourage us to dream, to imagine, and to anticipate good that we can't see in the moment. So maybe miracles are the synchronicity of the universe responding to the demands of our desires. Jesus did his ministry alone. He had disciples, but his ministry was his own. At Unity of Lehigh Valley, we do ministry together. We learn and grow create and discern together. 
I would say that Jesus was both humble and divine. A self-aware and selfless servant to his ministry. Maybe that's what each one of us can aspire to in our ministry. The affirmation Fillmore gave in Keep a True Lent for Palm Sunday was, The spirit of one that raised up Jesus dwells in me, and I am made perfect. The spirit of one that raised up Jesus dwells in me, and I am made perfect. On this Palm Sunday, we celebrate the ministry of the I Am. The I am that I am is whole and holy. This is the truth that I know and the truth that expands in my understanding day by day. That daily word about awakening Christ consciousness continues to expand in and through us and in and through our ministry. Before we go into our time of meditation, I want to I want to play a song that is a a celebration of community. For me, we can't celebrate ministry without celebrating community. So, this is a song called I am there for you and it's uh, Faith Rivera and Jenna Stanfield. When things are going wrong, you can always sing this song. I am there for you. Though we're far apart, gotta know you're in my heart. I am there for you. You'll never be alone. Oh, you'll never be alone.
And we aren't alone. Spirit is always with us. We are always connected through the power of spirit. And so let's turn in meditation to feel that oneness, to feel that togetherness, to feel that unity, the unity of spirit. And so we take a breath and we feel the activity of spirit. We feel the movement in our bodies. We feel the connection to one another. In the music, in the comments, in the energy in our bodies, we feel connected to the divine, connected to the flow, the flow of healing energy, the flow of guidance and comfort. We are always stronger together, together in our oneness. There is no distance in spiritual connection. This is an absolute truth that is brought into stark reality as we are in our individual places, knowing our oneness, knowing it with a certainty, never before presented to us, knowing it beyond all appearance. We are one. in the silence, right where we are. We are unity of Lehigh Valley. We are one with spirit. And gently we bring our awareness back into this time and place knowing our oneness. Um, the music that I've played today is available at Empower Music. Um, there's a link that's been on our Facebook page. It's um, in our Wednesday email. So uh, listen to the music that you need whenever you need it. Now is the time when we bless our offering. And we are grateful for the ties that have continued to come in. Um, this allows us to pay our bills, pay our staff, so that we have not had to lay anybody off. I don't know what people know, but um, churches are, for the most part, exempt from unemployment. So it's been a great gift that we can continue to pay our staff. And that's through the gifts that you bring. So we're going to bless our gifts and know that whether you are clicking on a donate button on our website or sending in uh, gifts through the mail, we are grateful, grateful for the flow. And so we open our hearts and minds as we affirm together the activity of spirit through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. So, today is the first Sunday of the month, and it is birthday Sunday. So I'm going to begin our announcements with birthday Sunday. And I know that we have at least three birthdays in April. Um, Jenny and Barry are on today, are here with us, and Terry O'Malley. I haven't uh, been able to see if she's on, but uh, I am not a singer, 
but I do have some music, so join in. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends of unity. Happy birthday to you. And God is blessing you now. God is blessing you now. God is blessing you. You are wonderful, John. God is blessing you now. So, John and Jenny and Barry and Terry have a wonderful April birthday as we, and Arlene, Arlene Altringham. So, everybody have a wonderful celebration of life this April. Our announcements. We have a Vesper service on Wednesday. And on Thursday, we will have Maundy Thursday as a Facebook Live service. So I want to ask you to have a little piece of bread, have a little glass of some kind of uh, clear fluid. So it can be like apple juice or um, I'm going to use cranberry juice or ginger ale or 7-Up, or uh, you can actually use wine if you want, and a candle. So we're going to use those elements, the bread, the liquid, and the candle in a uh, Maundy Thursday service that I hope will be different, um, but special. I'm going to attempt a new study group. It's going to be a discussion group using Brene Brown's new podcast series called Unlocking Us. Uh, the, there's no book to buy. The podcasts are free. The Zoom is free. And um, I will post more about that on Facebook and on um, our Wednesday email. So we will, because of new security, we will need a registration, but you can register for that uh, uh, discussion group by emailing me, revjoy at rcn.com. And I think we're going to aim for Monday evenings at 7. Um, it's just going to be an hour's discussion, so Monday from 7 to 8. So look forward to seeing you on Zoom. And uh, we'll get some more information, details out about that. Um, one other announcement. Uh, oh, Sam, it's probably going to start a week from this Monday. So I'll have it in the Wednesday email. I'll post it on Facebook. And um, it will start a week from tomorrow. Um, oh, if you have not read the Wednesday email... The other announcement is that um, my retirement has been moved out into the future to May 31st. So um, my great plan to retire without any drama and um, when everything was all settled uh, sort of disappeared. Uh, the universe here and watch what I can do. So... I will be moving my retirement out to May 31st. Whether or not we're back in the sanctuary or not by then, I don't know. Um, we're going to kind of see how this goes. But at least for now, I will be here through the end of April and through the end of May. So that's the uh, end of my announcements. That's uh, the end of our service today. I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday evening at Vespers. Um, hopefully some of you will join me Thursday evening at 7 for Maundy Thursday. And we'll be back here next Sunday for Easter Sunday. 
And my topic is the Easter Phoenix. Oh, and don't forget, there's children's chat on Wednesday at uh, 6 p.m. before Vespers. And um, this Wednesday, I'll be reading a surprise for Mrs. Bunny. So I hope uh, the kids can join me on uh, Wednesday at 6. Everybody else can join me Wednesday at 7. And have a great week. Happy Palm Sunday. And enjoy your brunch.